Howdy. In this chapter, we're going to talk about momentum. And the first thing that I want to talk about is linear momentum. Now, the equation for linear momentum is P, okay? That's the variable for it. And that's going to be M times V. And notice how I denoted that it's a vector. The reason that that's important is because we need to take direction into account, okay? Now, the way that I'm going to set up every problem is I'm going to set all my initial momentum equal to all my final momentum. Now, if you move in multiple directions, you have an x and a y component, you need to split the x's and the y's up individually, kind of like we did back in kinematics where I kept all the x's and the y's separate. And so, that's going to be your first thing. You split up your x and y components, and you know that you're going to be using momentum every time you have a collision or every time you have an explosion. That's where I'm going to use my conservation of momentum. So, let's take a look at this first problem. So taking a look at this first problem, it says that a block is moving with a known velocity of magnitude v along the x-axis on a frictionless table. It explodes into three pieces that remain in the plane of the table. The pieces have masses m1, m2, and m3, and the first two pieces have velocities v1 and v2 as shown, with theta a known angle. Find the direction of the velocity of the third piece. So here's going to be my strategy. My strategy is going to be to find the x component of my third piece, find the y component of the velocity of my third piece, and then to find my um, position, your angle is just going to be the arctangent of your y over your x, of your opposite over your adjacent. And so if I want to look at the x component, okay, if I want to find the x component of my third piece, what you do is you set your initial equal to your final. And initially, it was all one block together. Initially, you had the m1 plus m2 plus m3 as one times that velocity but then it exploded into different pieces. Now M1 has no component in the X direction, so it has no final momentum in the X direction. But M2 does. M2's uh, X component of the momentum is going to be M2 times the X component of its velocity, which will be a V2 cosine theta. Now, M3 has an unknown direction. It has an unknown anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say M3 times V3X. I don't know what V3X is, but I'm about to by doing a little bit of algebra. So I just subtract that over, divide by M3, and this is the X component the of your third piece. Now that you've done the X component, you do the exact same thing for the Y component. If you look here, Initially, this block is not moving in the y direction. The initial component, uh, the y component of this initial momentum is zero. And then as for these guys, m1, according to my axis, if this is my positive x and my positive y, then it has a negative velocity in the y direction, a negative m1 v1. But as for m2, it'll be positive and it'll be opposite of that angle so positive m2 v2 sine theta. And then as for m3, I don't know what m3 is, where it's going. And so I'm just going to say plus m3 v3 y. And what I need to do is find the y component of that v3. I do a little bit of algebra to find the y component of my third piece by adding and subtracting this over to the other side, dividing by m3. And then finally, if you want to find the direction at which it's going, just do the arctangent of your opposite over your adjacent. 